Hello there and welcome to Share Views. Uh, I'm joined by David Paul, Managing Director of Vectorvest. Uh, how are you today, David? I'm great, Zach. Thank you for having me. Right, you're uh, hopefully going to uh, give us, uh, tell us some of the secrets about how to invest on the stock market, possibly? Well, I I'm going to show you how I go about investing in the stock market. There are certainly, certainly many, many ways of doing it. Uh, uh, and uh, I I'm going to talk about uh, what I call the Vectorvest Edge. And uh, uh, the Vectorvest Edge is all about putting three things together. Uh, first of all, uh, we look at the fundamental position of a company and we analyze uh, the fundamentals in great detail. Uh, we look at the technical position of the company, the study of trends and turning points. And then we look at the technical position of the overall market. Uh, and uh, in essence, I'm looking for uh, an undervalued share that's growing its earnings aggressively and safely. That's rising, and I want to buy the darn thing when the general market is rising. And uh, that intuitively makes an awful lot of sense to me, uh, and it's working really well for us uh, in the UK uh, over the last uh, few years that I've been involved. Well, I mean, the, the point, point with that is that uh, there are very, I mean, there's software which is maybe, uh, which will number crunch uh, fundamentals or you know, ratios, um, PEs and stuff like that. And there's um, obviously the moving averages, uh, the TA type software as well. But you're the only people who, who combine the two aspects. Quite correctly. The, the, I, I think that if you go to an investment meeting, Zach, there'll be the fundamental analyst sitting in one corner and the technical analyst in the other corner. And uh, in fact, they rarely speak. Uh, until the second drink and then they throw abuse at each other for the rest of the evening. In fact, I remember going to a debate where you, in fact, debated the technical side of a market and then there was another fellow debating the fundamental side of the market and there wasn't a great deal of common ground there, as I recollect. Ended up in a punch-up. Yes. <laughs> so uh, at Vectorvest, uh, we pragmatically say that we want the best of both worlds. Okay, uh, and uh, the founder of Vectorvest, Bart Delito, he's got a PhD in chemical engineering, and uh, he put Vectorvest together, in fact, for his own investing. And then uh, after using it for two or three years, uh, he felt that he commercialized the idea. And uh, Vectorvest is 28 years old now in the US, and we've been operating in the UK uh, for the last six or seven years. I think we're pretty much the only investment software company an education company in the UK that's authorized by the FCA. Okay, all right. All right. So uh, our objective is to find out what's the share really worth. Uh, and I remember my dear old granddad many years telling me that the only way to make money in anything was to find the value of something and then pay less for it. So that's essentially what we're trying to do, okay? And whether you're in property, whether you're in used cars, that's pretty much the only way to make money uh, in trading in any asset. We put a value to every share every single evening, and we put an earnings potential over the next three years to a share. And uh, the earnings potential we call relative value. Uh, we put a number to the safety of the earnings, and we put a number to the trend. And when a computer gets a number, it can scan through the database and actually spit out shares that fulfill those criteria. So in essence, we're looking for a share that's trading below the vector base valuation, that's got a high earnings potential over a window of three years into the future, with reasonably safe earnings, uh, conservative people, uh, long-term players, people who don't want to be bothered with stop losses too much, would push up the relative safety and their criteria. More aggressive players would pretty much ignore relative safety. They'll be managing risk proactively uh, with stop loss orders, uh, whatever suits you. Uh, and uh, on the next slide, I've tried to put it all together. This is Morgan Sindel. This is a share that you and I have spoken about privately on many occasions. Um, uh, the candlestick uh, chart uh, in the middle of the page fairly uh, over the last year. Uh, the green line study above the candles is our uh, the vector vest valuation. And in my own personal trading, I always like to see a gap or a window of 20%. I like to see the value divided by price. In other words, the vector vest calculated valuation divided by the trading price is greater than 1.2. Down below uh, the price in that window, that's earnings per share growth. And I like to see the earnings per share growth moving up from the bottom left to the top right 
uh, of the little chart. And I found that the smoother and the, the more linearly that that grows, the easier goes the trading. And if you remember from the intelligent investor, Ben Graham said that earnings per share growth is the engine that drives the share price. I never forgot that. So uh, right at the top of the chart, you're going to see a red and green and uh, orange uh, color and those are our buy sell and hold recommendations and as you can see uh, uh, Morgan Sindel went in it was undervalued and uh, it actually uh, broke up through a high and your eagle-eyed uh, techni technicians eyes should see the cup and handle pattern uh, right at the left hand side of the chart. Uh, it went into a buy recommendation. It broke up through a 52 week high and the fundamentals were good. So that's a share that's undervalued with a really good technical picture and I still like the share. It's broken up through an ascending triangle uh, and I, I think the share has got a long way to go. Okay, so that's the first two. We're looking at the value uh, the fundamentals of the share look good and the technical picture of the share looks good. The next thing now is to work out what the general market is doing and that's probably 70% of the exercise. So to time the general market we've put together a thing called the Vector Vest Composite. It's not the FTSE 100, not the FTSE 250, the FTSE 350. It's all 2,170 shares that we follow on uh, the London stock market and on AIM. It's an equally weighted index because we firmly believe that an equally weighted index reflects the sentiment of the market much better than a market cap weighted index. We look at three aspects of it. We look at its price, we look at its breadth, and uh, we uh, use our proprietary buy and sell ratio to work out the breadth of the market. And we look at its momentum or uh, relative timing in vector based speak. And we put that together into various market timing models, a long-term model for buy and hold people and a very short-term model for swing traders. I'm only going to, and, and, and between those two, we have three other ones uh, for people, who, uh, probably for spread bettors. We have a, a system called the DEW system that's really good for uh, spread betting people over holding positions for uh, a week to two weeks to three weeks of that order. Uh, so and on the next chart, uh, we have the vector based composite over the last since the start of 2016 and uh, I think you can just about see Zach the red and the green triangles and those mark our longest term market timing system It's called a confirm call and we had a, a sell uh, on uh, pretty much the first trading day of 2016 and if you remember, uh, it doesn't look like much now, but that was one hell of a sell-off into, uh, into the middle of February last year. Do you remember yes, that? Yes, and the January effect didn't work very well either, did it? Yes. And then February, uh, I think it was the 15th or so, uh, Yellen backtracked on those interest rate hikes she was going to have yeah. in 2016, and the whole picture changed. And uh, we were in uh, up market until November. Uh, then uh, we got a sell-off. That lasted a month and then on December the 15th uh, we got a buy signal and that buy signal is still current okay so that's the longest market timing model now my objective is to be totally invested when the longest timing model uh, is uh, up the page and largely I've been totally invested since the um, uh, 15th of December and uh, on my blog at vectorvest.co.uk I've tried to detail all of that uh, as best as I can uh, without giving one-on-one -on -one financial advice, uh, which I'm not allowed to do. The front page of VectorVest details an incredible amount of information, but for our conversation, uh, the most important thing is the little traffic light in the middle of the page. And uh, the traffic light measures the short-term trend, whereas those uh, previous chart measures the long-term trend. And it shuttles back and forward between red and green. And at the minute, uh, the short-term trend is up, but it's not up with any conviction. Uh, it's sitting in the middle of the page, the little pointers uh, at 12 o'clock, uh, and VectorVest advocates caution until that moves back into the green again. Uh, so uh, to, to be involved in the market, I, I want to see a confirmed up, and I want the little pointer to be in the green. At present, I've got the confirmed up, but the pointer's not in the green, and VectorVest advocates sitting on your hands until that happens. Uh, so go back to Morgan Sindel. Uh, 
You can see the red and the green triangle in Morgan Sindel. That red and green triangle has got nothing to do with Morgan Sindel, apart from the fact that Morgan Sindel is one of the 2,174 shares that make up the index. That's, in fact, the general market that I've overlaid on Morgan Sindel. So, uh, from that little uh, green triangle that happened in December the 15th, the general market was rising, so that's good. Uh, the fundamentals of Morgan Sindel are good in that it's undervalued, it's growing earnings strongly, and the technical picture is that it's on a buy recommendation and it's breaking up through new highs. So I can tick all my boxes, and when I can tick all my boxes, I get very lucky. Uh, I'm sure you've read Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas, where he talks about the mechanical approach, and then if the mechanical approach works for you, you can move to a more intuitive approach. I've never really got there, either in my short-term trading or in uh, this longer-term trading. Perhaps nobody has. Yeah, when I, when I tick, very difficult to know the difference between intuition and ego. Mm. <laughs> and uh, I'm a mechanical engineer to start with, and people always ask me at seminars, what is, what's your definition of ego? And mine is that, uh, my definition is simple, that mine's bigger than yours, okay? So uh, it's very difficult to know uh, whether uh, this gut feeling you've got is, uh, uh, is real or whether it's just an extension of your ego. So uh, uh, stick to uh, the boxes. Coats. Move, move through. Uh, Coats, uh, again, uh, undervalued. Uh, the general market is rising uh, and uh, all three things saying yes. Maybe uh, caught it a little bit late in the day. The last place to have bought it was when that hole turned into a buy. Uh, and uh, that's looking very good. I still think there's more legs in coats, yes. Okay. Uh, countryside properties, I think, uh, has broken out of that little flag. The technical picture looks good. It's undervalued, and the general market is rising. Once we get a little bit more conviction out of the short-term trend, then I think countryside properties can go up the page strongly. I think that would be the one that I think is going to move most likely out of the, of the shares I'm talking about today. Okay. Uh, Caledonian investments massively undervalued by our model. Fundamentals look good. The general market is rising. It's broken. Uh, the 52-week high come back and uh, tested it, and uh, that looks good to me as well. Okay. And 3i pull back to support. We've had a good run in 3i this year, uh, and uh, I, I think as long as the general market doesn't deteriorate, then 3i looks strong for a little bit further up the page. And uh, my seven steps to success. Well, I always look for value divided by price greater than 1.2. Uh, I want our earnings potential on a scale between 0 and 2 to be above 1.3. The bigger, the better. It drives the share price. I want the relative safety to be greater than 1 on a scale between 0 and 2. I want earnings growth to be above 15%. The bigger, the better. The share should be on a buy recommendation and breaking up through a new high. The general market should be within a confirmed up, i.e. our longest term trends at our back, and the short term trend should just have turned to up. And uh, at the minute, for those uh, trades that I talked about, I'm still waiting on number seven. Apart from that, everything else has been fulfilled. If I tick those boxes, I get very lucky indeed. Well, you can try it for yourself. Uh, a full trial of VectorVest UK and VectorVest USA for five weeks. It's £5.95 and uh, then uh, it's £44 a month. It's on a month by month basis, Zach. If I can't make you money, you can stop it at any time. I don't think I can be fairer than that. Well, that sounds very reasonable. Um, so basically, best of both worlds, fundamental and uh, technical. So whether, you're, whether you like technical only or you like fundamental, you've got sort of, you've got the the two things combined. The best of both worlds, sir. The best of both worlds. Uh, I was a technician. I've been a technician for the last 30 years. And uh, I just simply couldn't keep the fundamentals under control because, one, I didn't have the skills, and secondly, I didn't have the time. And, and thirdly, I couldn't be bothered. It's definitely hard work. Uh, so VectorVest does all the heavy lifting of the fundamentals for me now. And my hit rate has gone up significantly since I've been able to use my technical analysis only in shares with outstanding fundamentals. You're pushing on an open door. It's helped me push my hit rate up from about 60% to nearly 80% when I tick all the boxes. Uh, David Paul, Managing Director of Vector Post, thank you very much. Sir, thank you. That's it for this week's Share Views.